And does thermal paste actually expire? After all, if we take a look online, manufacturers typically say that the shelf life of a typical tube of thermal paste lasts between two and five years. And so, well, today I want to put this to the test to see if this is just big thermal paste convincing us to buy more tubes of thermal paste when we don't really need to, or to see what exactly happens if we put an expired tube in our PC. And so to facilitate this experiment, I have some really interesting things right here on the table in front of me. Starting with this 11-year-old tube of Arctic MX4, which will be able to compare against a five-year-old two plus one that I purchased just this week. And so on paper, the brand new one should perform, well, way better than the 11-year-old one if it does actually expire, but time will tell. We'll also take a look at a 19-year-old Arctic Silver 5 tube, compare that against a 10-year-old Arctic Silver 5 tube, as well as one that, again, I bought this week. And to top things off and push our experiment even further, I have this very special tub of 30-plus-year-old thermal compound that I'm just so excited to throw into a computer and to see if it works. And so with that, let's go ahead and start with the MX4 lineup. And for this, I wanna just start by actually just looking at these older tubes of thermal paste themselves. This large 20 gram tube was purchased in 2013, which upon initial inspection does not appear to be over a decade old. I mean, the fact that this paste still has as much liquid as it does inside of it, that's, that's a really good sign. Mainly because what that means is that it hasn't completely dried out, like say this other tube of thermal paste, which you can see all these cracks, which ultimately is the separation from the metal oxides and the silicone oil. So, I mean, I gotta say, already I'm pretty impressed with how this thermal paste is looking. Let's see how that compares against the five-year-old tube of MX4. Man, this is holding its oil liquid just super well. And so if we go ahead and put some of this on our CPU, wow, I, I could be convinced these are from the same tube. But now the real comparison will come from, well, opening up a brand new MX4 tube to see how it compares, at least visually for now. One thing to note is that they did end up updating their design. I actually think it's pretty cool how they've retained this little swoosh underneath Arctic into their new logo as the swoosh in the A. But okay, as a brand new tube, if we go ahead and give it a little push, ooh, you, so you can actually see a difference. The brand new tube is actually just a bit less runny. So maybe these other ones did actually have some separation of the oils. See how it shimmers there and it looks just covered in a little bit of liquid? The paste in the brand new tube doesn't have that little bit of shimmer. And applying this onto our CPU, you? Okay, yeah, there is a fair bit of visual difference. The texture does look just a bit more well put together. Regarding general setup, we'll be using the same PC to test every single one of these different thermal pastes. This computer currently has a Ryzen 5 5600X3D along with this deep cool cooler that is a bit unorthodox because it doesn't have the fan in the middle, but it will be kept consistent between every single one of the tests. And now for testing purposes, what we'll do is we'll measure the CPU temperature in this top left line graph and put our CPU through 100% load. So keep an eye on this graph up here to show CPU temperature temperature, but also keep an eye on this one down here, which is CPU clock speed. This one down here will tell us if the CPU is throttling, equally as important as the temperature. From left to right, we'll apply the newer to older thermal pastes, and once we put each machine under load, we immediately see the first real performance difference between the different ages, with the brand new MX4 plateauing around 87 degrees, whereas both the 5-year-old and 11-year-old MX4s do hit our 90-degree temperature ceiling. As the test continues, we do see the brand new paste settle around 85 degrees Celsius, whereas as the older pastes start showing signs of thermal throttling, with the CPU clock speeds being reduced ever so slightly down to around 4.175 GHz with the 5-year-old paste, and similarly for the 11-year-old paste, although surprisingly this even older paste is actually seemingly more stable with far less clock speed drops. Overall, this shows a clear difference between the new and old paste, but honestly not quite as drastic as one as you might have expected. And now switching over to the Arctic Silver 5 tubes, it's honestly astounding to me that the design language hasn't changed a bit in the past 20 years. The information is the same, the logo is the same. Heck, even between these two, it would be almost impossible to tell that one is older than the other, unlike on the MX4 side, where there was a pretty clear upgrade in terms of the visual. So, I mean, I gotta give Arctic Silver 5 a lot of props back in the day, coming up with a, a banger of a logo with all this silver. And again, this tube in particular is 19 years old. It's a bit more difficult to see the condition without opening the tube yet, but I'm not seeing a lot of cracking or separation between the oils and the oxides. Actually, this cap is like pretty well stuck on there. It's like opening a time capsule 20 years old basically and now if we take a closer look oh man 
pressing this, this is almost like stuck. Ooh, okay, there we go. Now it's coming out. I'm not seeing that much oil separation. You can see the texture and the paste there. This is really holding its form really well. And like, check out that viscosity. This thing is real sticky still. That's crazy. It's hard to tell, but I am pushing incredibly hard, much less oily than the MX4 counterpart. And so now for comparison, if we take a look at the 10-year-old tube of Arctic Silver 5, this is definitely coming out of the tube a lot easier than the 19-year-old tube. But I'm not really seeing any significant difference besides the fact that it does seem to be a little less viscous. Adding it onto a CPU. So maybe the fact that the viscosity is lower as it ages does mean that there's some amount of separation. Because these do look pretty strikingly different, which I suppose makes sense given its nine year age difference. But now comparing both of those to a brand new tube of Arctic Silver 5, ooh, wow, that comes out way easier. And being brand new, it almost looks a bit more oily than even the 10 and the 19 year old pastes, which almost feels exactly opposite of the MX4 line that we just took a look at. Those ones seem to get more oily as they aged, but look at this brand new. You can see that glimmer on it compared to the thermal paste that's 19 years old. Yeah, there's definitely some stark differences. Even this one on the left is a bit darker. I can't tell. Maybe maybe that's also a result of the oil and oxide separating, but that's fascinating how much it changes. To see if these visual differences apply to thermal performance differences, we'll apply each paste again newest to oldest from left to right. And as we put each machine under load, the differences are even more subtle than our last test. Here we have the brand new tube settling at 89 degrees Celsius with both the 10 year old and 19 year old tubes quickly hitting that 90 degree temperature ceiling. So now taking a look at the clock speed graphs, while there's no thermal throttling with the brand new thermal paste on the left, we do actually see the older tubes of thermal paste act very similar to one another, both throttling their clocks down between 4.175 gigahertz and sometimes even 4.150 gigahertz fairly consistently. This shows even less of a stark difference between the newer and older pastes than with the MX4, but even still, there is a difference. And real quick, just for fun, what happens if you use a 30 30 plus year old tub of thermal paste inside of your PC. Surely there's no way this can still be effective right? Well, there's only one way to find out. Man, check out how dry this is. There's almost just no oil left at all. Regardless, we'll add that same pea-sized amount onto our CPU, if it'll even come off of our applier. Oh, this is not going to spread well at all. <laughs> you can see that well, the temperature, it does hit the 90 degrees and down from 4.2 gigahertz to basically 4.0 gigahertz. I suppose that should be expected, but this is still on paper an effective way to transfer heat. I mean, yeah, it's hitting 90 degrees Celsius and it's, you know, throttling a little bit, but being over 30 plus years old, I'll tell you what, if I'm this efficient in 30 years, I'll be, I'll be happy. You know what I'm saying? I did reach out to this GC electronics company to try to pinpoint exactly when this tub of thermal paste was produced, but as of filming this video, I haven't heard back yet, but if I do hear anything, I will leave a pinned comment down below. So in conclusion, thermal paste does appear to physically change inside of the tube as it just sits there over time. And this physical separation between the silicone oil and the metal oxides does appear to alter the ability to transfer heat over time. The brand new tubes of thermal paste for both the MX4 and the Arctic Silver 5 clearly recorded the lowest temperatures throughout the load testing. But that said, I almost feel like the more impressive takeaway is that 5-year-old, 11-year-old, even 19-year-old tubes of thermal paste won't instantly make your computer burst into a ball of flames. And so honestly, this is 19 years old, and really the only difference between this and a brand new tube of Arctic Silver 5 was like a couple of degrees Celsius, and it may be throttled to 4.15 gigahertz instead of 4.2. And remember, this is all with like 100% load testing. So in more typical everyday use cases, expired thermal thermal paste will likely perform nearly exactly the same as brand new thermal paste. So you should definitely not be afraid to use expired thermal paste in your PC. That said, if you're looking to squeeze every single ounce of performance as you possibly can, then it's also clear that reapplying thermal paste every couple years will keep your computer ever so slightly cooler than, well, using old thermal paste. This experiment has been a ton of fun for me personally. Special thanks to everyone on the Reddit thread who sent me all of their super old thermal paste. Honestly, you guys came in super clutch even making this video possible in the first place. So thanks again. And so that's all I have for you today. As always, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.